Icebergs, it's going to get much shallower. These icebergs now that are right in front of us cannot float over uh, the hill because they, they draw too much water. Now there's, there's no passage, and of course, uh, then you can have problems. Now it looks like this is what we can find. Uh, wow, all these kids with you? Yeah. You're a daring man. <laughs> How great for them. They must be loving it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what's on breaks in your life. My father died uh, two years ago. Somebody dropped in. And, uh, they used to run a house off of me. And, uh, Comes out. The, uh, uh, the holes are left, and then that is sculpted by the water. And the other water is September, after everybody was gone, Labor Day, then we were able to get back to Facebook. Just happened that way? Yeah, it just opened up. Opened up. And it, but, uh, so things are changing, you know, see we have... The ice puts on the bedrock below, over there by Nunatak Mountain. Now, you know, I don't remember really what the pressure turned out to be, uh, but they told us that the ice was 3,000 feet thick just west of Nunatak Mountain. I think until, uh, you know, April 1st when it goes away. Usually, uh, the, uh, Usually, Valdez is out in front of Columbia Glacier. Yeah. Well, he uh, told everybody, of course, about this. And, you know, November, everybody's gone. I mean, we're gone. There's no uh, uh, 
tourists, they're all gone. Uh, nothing's going on until people are hunkered down for the winter. But Greg had his boat ready to go, and he came out here. A few friends, wanted to see what's going on. And... so big that they could uh, uh, bite through it. Well, they said, they use the rope as a tool. He's a pretty elegant little guy. And old and obsolete. Do you know the largest adult male see out of their town but as much as six feet? Uh -oh. When you go to our museum, don't forget you have to go to the museum. When you do, you feel the see out of the belt. See how fine the turn it is? See how big? Here we are at Valdez. It's finally cleared off this afternoon. So you can see the beautiful mountains and all the glaciers in the mountains around us. Here's the Worthington Glacier, just north of Valdez, and you can actually get out here and walk on it, I guess, we'll get up a little closer. Here's some of that blue ice. It's not nearly as blue today as on a cloudy day. This is the marine, uh, side marine of this rock and all. This is shoved down in front of the glacier in the winter. And then the, as the re glacier retreats in the summer, it leaves this pile of rock. Stanford, Drum, Blackburn. I've forgotten the other one, but there are at least two of these mountains that are over 16,000 feet. This is Emerald Lake, somewhere between on our way down to Skagway, we're sort of in between Yukon Territory and British Columbia somewhere. The color is a result of the uh, sediment on the bottom, which is white. And it's a rather shallow lake. Well, here we are at the Carcross Desert. This is claimed to be the world's smallest desert. When uh, glaciers were here, uh, they backed up a small lake and deposited all this sand in here. And there's a very strong prevailing wind. 
which makes the vegetation very difficult to grow in here. And so there's this little mini desert right here in the middle of things. You know, about a half a mile back, there's no desert at all. Another Kodak movement on our way to Skagway. Here we are at Fraser Lake, which is uh, virtually on the Canadian uh, U.S. border. And uh, if you look right there in the center of the picture is the Canadian uh, Customs House. So we're on the Canadian side right now, looking into the Alaskan side. Looking towards Skagway, uh, and now this way, and you're looking at the train that we're going to take here in a couple of days and tend to. That's the track over there. And it goes up to White Mountain. And uh, right over there is Dead Horse Gulch, where the uh, miners left their horses died. Many horses died right over there. That's the track right that goes right through the center of the picture.
the whole procession would come to a standstill. The pipeline is parallel much to our trip today, and here you can see it go right across the river. Pretty hard to miss. We came across from Car Cross to the Alaskan Highway at Jake's Corner today. I thought you might like to see what our what our yellow uh, Nissan looked like. Also, here are the uh, two gorillas that uh, Ann can't stand. Uh, they're right there. You see them? Here's our uh, uh, turn signal light on the uh, Nissan. Also, you'll notice there's our headlight on the Nissan. Here's the turn signal on the left-hand turn signal on the Nissan. And here's the headlight. I can't see it now, but this headlight's also broken somewhere. I see there's been an artist here in the campground someplace. Okay, here's a picture of Roy out trying to generate some snow or water. However, what we're stopped here for, look across here. This bear glacier. You see all the icebergs floating out here in this uh and I hope this shows up as blue as that really is. And then looking down stream, well, let's see, here's some right up against the shore here. Look at all the icebergs down there. It's almost a little cave there. I suppose I've been calving from there. We're probably standing on the frontal moraine of this glacier, I would guess. We're in line to get our RV cleaned off, and ours looks just like that on the back.
We're on our way up to Salmon Glacier. And Salmon Glacier is the fourth largest glacier in the world. Here it is, Salmon Glacier. I thought we were going to get up to the face of it. The face is down below us someplace. It's around that curve, I can't even see it. This road coming up here is awful. And that's about where I decided to turn around. It looks like it's going to get even narrower on up there. So I decided to turn around here. Well, here's the glacier again. I need to look at all the glaciers that are right here. You can see from this one spot. Well, this may be our last chance to see a glacier up close and personal. This is Bear Glacier. It's uh, just north of Stewart uh, and Hyder. Move the Closer together, Mitzi, move in. Mitzi, move in. Expand it, get to the back. Push it one back, one back, back towards the end. Why don't you let Jack take the picture with your camera and you can do it with that? And the middle one is the, is the uh, telephone. Miko to hold the camera with the rear end of it. Are we ready? One. No, no, Brandon is. Norman, hold Bandit. There you go. You get in there, too. Come here, Bandit. Come here. We won't know. You belong to You got to hold her. You're going to have to hurry up. There's a space right next to Nancy. Get in there. Have a good time. Scoot over. All right, everybody ready? Everybody. Hey! There, we got it. You little shark blossom fun can. Miko. Miko. Look here. Here oh, comes Sam. Here comes Sam. Hurry up! Oh, oh, it's one more. Look I don't like have anything better to take pictures. Okay. Smile, Mika. I'm done this way. Oh, I'm going to get wind missing. Oh, there you go. Last time. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go.
carving shop and you do even more. Thank you, Roy. Sure. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Well, I don't know. You got Peter. Everybody ready? Yeah. All right. Hey, Norm, did Yeah, I turn around here and get there. Yeah. We didn't know that. What? Everybody ready? You don't want my picture, do you? I said, why can't we just keep them making it all? They ain't cleaned up once a day. Hey, it's a... Oh, my gosh, he's a tomato. Oh, it's a tomato or something. Hi, Bruce. That's an awful long time. Yes, scene. Well, I have to add the last part on it. I think I'm the only one on the caravan that didn't get my picture taken on, on the video, and so I'm adding it on to the tail end. This is the end of our caravan, essentially. And uh, we're going off on our own trip uh, down to Washington and Oregon and uh, back home to California then. So the rest of it's the rest of our trip after the caravan. Gabriel. We shall.
there's Mount St. Helens. You're looking in right into the crater. And we're right on the edge of the destruction zone. And look at this forest. It's been blown down and singed and burned. Spirit Lake with all the old logs from the blowout. Can you tell which direction Mount St. Helens is by looking at the logs and which way they're the trees and which way they're pointed? Show you Mount St. Helens. There it is. With the top missing. Spirit Lake. And Mount St. Helens. With the top missing. And there is smoke coming from it up there. Jan and I have had a discussion about whether it's a cloud or smoke. Convinced it's smoke. We'll ask the ranger. <laughs> Mount Adams, another one of the mountains in the Cascade Range. Mount Hood, way off in the distance. I hope you can see it. Here goes our coach. Yeah, the gorillas are going, and to tonight there's going to be a pair of camels on there. Really? Besides? Yep.